Uh, well, thank you guys for joining. This is the final panel of Deep End Day. Give a round of applause for the organizers of Deep End Day. I think they've done a great job. So uh, I'm super stoked to be here. Um, today, we're going to be talking about building Deep End challenges uh, and trends. This is the panel that you guys do not want to miss. I'm glad you're here. My name is Adam Mosney, and I will be your moderator for this panel event. Um, okay. ah, the dog's still here. Cool. Before I get into my questions, uh, I want to introduce our panelists. First, we have Mike Horton, project creator slash founder of GeodeNet. And I saw somewhere online, I forget it was Twitter or LinkedIn, it said, Go Bears. So you're, uh, what bears? Who are the bears? UC Berkeley. Berkeley Bears. Oh, I was thinking, I was wondering, so are you a UC Berkeley alum? Yes. Yeah. Oh, right on. Did you like uh, your time at BC Berkeley? Oh, man, it was the best. It, yeah. was, it was awesome. Yeah. I've never been, but I've heard it's cool. It's a fun place. Berkeley is, uh, they call it Berserkly, right? It's what's, it's uh, quite entertaining. Berkeley. Berserkly, yeah, that's, that's quite that's entertaining. entertaining. That's funny. Well, well, we have a handful of questions to get into today. So I just want to kind of level set with just like a softball for you guys. Um, or maybe it's not a softball. We'll see. Where is the deep end industry today? How, where does it stand um, compared to maybe last year? Do you think it's about the same? Do you think there's new projects? Like, where do you think the industry stands today? It's almost state of the industry talk right now. So maybe we'll start over here with Mike. Yeah, I think it's definitely matured a lot. There's a sort of second wave of deep ends that have, I think, come, come in the last two years and have built out networks. So first, any sort of deep end network, I think there's some sort of network building that happens before you can monetize. And I think a lot of networks now, like Akash, like ourselves, are, are well into the monetization phase. And I think it's an exciting growth area uh, for, for Deepin to be able to not only grow supply, but also start to really grow demand in a big, scalable way. There'll probably be some big innovations in Deepin yet to come, but I think we're, we're, we're definitely maturing and Web2 audiences are starting to really warm up, I think, across a number of Deepins to using Deepin networks for uh, enterprise applications, and that's a that's a big deal. So we, before we get into the kind of the fun questions, like what are the fun stuff you guys are building or what are some of the cool things you've seen in the future of the space, let's talk about limitations because it is still, you know, Deepin is still kind of newer. Um, at least I think it maybe is. Maybe I'm wrong there. But I want to talk maybe about what are some of the limitations currently existing in decentralized compute storage or data networks, um, and then what are some ways... Oh, he doesn't doesn't like this question. What are some What are some ways uh, you guys are kind of approaching, um, kind of crossing those hurdles or going through those barriers? So for us, I think the biggest challenge has been in geospatial. Obviously, you want to have kind of coverage everywhere. People are interested in you know global high accuracy positioning, and that's the core service that GeoNet provides. And Deepin works extremely well and developed economy. So we have blanketed the United States in coverage. We've blanketed um, Europe and even Eastern Europe has done very well. But you get to somewhere like Africa or South America, it's a much trickier game. We can't rely quite as much on full decentralization when you find sort of key partners in those areas who could deploy like a lot of hardware. So that's, I think, one of the, the challenges that we see that we're working towards figuring out maybe partnering with RWA projects, different ways to build out infrastructure um, in some of the more developing world economies. We've had a big success in India, um, but we've put a huge effort into that too. Um, so it hasn't been as scalable as how I say or easy for us as, as say Europe or North America. So that's something from our side that it's a, is a barrier. Um, let's get into some of the fun stuff then. What are some of the advantages of decentralized cloud solutions over the traditional centralized providers? Boo. Well, we have a bit of advantage in, in the space that we're in in that you can't be centralized because you have to have this physical coverage. You have to have these devices deployed all over the world and have this even geospatial coverage. So it's inherently a decentralized problem. And the centralized solutions have actually proved very difficult at solving uh, in solving the problem. The coordination effort to get uh, these GPS base stations up all over the world is really significant. And it's very hard to organize and pay people. And it's just incredibly, incredibly slow and expensive. So that's a big advantage um, for us. And the result of that, we've been able to deploy this network super fast. We now have the world's largest high accuracy, precise positioning network. By, by quite some margin, by a, like sort of a factor of two or more. 
And um, I think the deep end coordination of being able to do that is is really the the fundamental reason for that. The beginning of this conversation, I kind of kicked it off with, you know, how has the space changed over the past year? Um, you guys got the memo to bring your crystal balls along. Yeah, I got the crystal balls. So let's all pull out our crystal. Everyone pull out your crystal balls. What does one year from now look like in the deep end space? What will we be talking about one year from now? I think we'll be talking about pretty big customers that are pretty well known using deep end networks for mission critical stuff. I do. We see it in our pipeline. We have customers who are really using our network very heavily and it's going more into more and more mainstream applications like automotive and consumer products. So I do think there'll be quite, I think, I think deep end is going to have its day in the next 12 months and there's going to be a number of networks that show very, very big traction. Awesome. So final thing, we got 35 seconds of so speed round on this one. Um, this wouldn't be uh, ETH Denver unless we did some shilling. So what's one thing you'd like to shill about you or your company that you guys are participating in that you'd like to shill? So go for it. So if you're interested in getting a robotic lawnmower to take care of your yard, just let us know. Oh, I'll talk to you later. If you're looking for a uh, decentralized VM and uh, a really good uh, uh, project to park your stakes for with really great rewards, call me. There you go. Yeah, we're well, interested about the, all the people who is the, like the decentralized computing and working with us. I already see lots of cool payment projects. I like that so much. Token launch coming up if you want to be informed. Uh, uh, Get close to that. That's a good shell. <laughs> I will give you my address. Well, thank, thank you, panelists. Thank you all for attending this. Um, thank you, Deep End Day Denver, for hosting us. And uh, everyone have a good ETH Denver, and we'll see you in the metaverse. <laughs>